So you live in Europe, anyone invests in ETFs. You've probably heard of American ETFs from famous YouTubers like Andre Jeek, Humphrey Young, Marco from Whiteboard Finance, or me, of course, the Italian twin of Mano Ginobili. And you'd like to finally start investing. But if you're new to ETF investing, especially in Europe, it's confusing. You Google, for example, S&P 500 ETF Europe, or you look in your brokerage app and you find a huge list of different S&P 500 ETFs that look all the same and you don't know what to choose. To make it harder, you run into a lot of jargon, like accumulating and distributing funds, physical and synthetic funds, USD or Euro, and so on. So you get stuck. This video is here to solve all your problems. And so am I. We're going to go through all the important information you need to finally start investing in ETFs from Europe without any doubt. Now, I personally use Trade Republic as a brokerage app since many years, so I'm also going to show you how the app looks like during this video. I like it because it's one of the best brokers in Europe and it even gives you 3.75% per year on your cash. If you decide to use Trade Republic and you use the link in the description below to download it for free, you're going to get a bonus share with a value of at least 10 euros up to 100 euros. Alternatively, you can just scan this QR code and it will land directly in the app in your Google or Apple store. But now let's not waste any more time and let's go straight to the guide. Step number one is pick your ETF strategy. ETFs are like ice creams. You have a lot of flavors to choose from, so why would you always buy chocolate? When you invest in ETFs, you can buy an ETF focused on the US, on developed markets, on emerging markets, or specifically focused on Europe or Asia. You can also invest in single sectors like technology, electrical vehicles, clean energy, or healthcare. Or you can invest in different company size classes like small companies, middle companies, large companies, and so on. If you browse the Trade Republic app for ETFs, you see you have different filters here. Under industry, for example, you can choose the different industries you're interested in. And there is a lot. Or you can choose to filter by regions and you see that you have the whole world available, including the US. But you can also just widen the search bar. For example, if I'm interested in a dividend ETF, I could write here dividend and I get a list of all the ETFs that contain the word dividend in their name. To sum up, since we are going to see later how to actually choose the best ETFs, the first step is to pick an ETF strategy that works for you and that you're going to be able to follow in the long term constantly and consistently. Regardless of which strategy you want to follow, the most important principle you need to follow is that of diversification. You can't put all your eggs in one basket, because if the basket breaks, you lose it all. The more focused you are, the higher the risk you're wrong and the more the ETF is gonna move like a roller coaster. So choose a foundational ETF, which is gonna represent the foundation of your portfolio and then expand your portfolio with other ETFs depending on your goals. The foundational ETF in Europe could be something like the iShares Core S&P 500 UCITS ETF, which represents the 500 best and largest companies of the American stock market. Or a world ETF like the iShares Core MSCI World UCITS ETF that represents all developed markets in the world. Moving on to step two, you need to find ETFs based on Europe. In Europe, you have the possibility to invest in really similar ETFs than in the US or the rest of the world, but they are not the same ETFs. In the US, for example, a really famous S&P 500 ETF is VO, the S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard. If I try to search for VO in Trade Republic, as in all other European apps, I'm not going to find anything relevant. So the best way if you want to find their European alternatives is to actually search for the name. So let's write here S&P 500 and click on ETFs. And you see a huge list of S&P 500 ETFs based on Europe. Here are, for example, also S&P 500 ETFs from Vanguard, iShares, Amundi, and so on. They are all alternative versions of the same thing. The collection of the 500 largest and best companies of the American stock market. And therefore, they're also almost the same in performance. But the differences between each other will be clear to you by the end of this video. Just know that the reason why you don't find directly the American ETFs is that Europe has its own regulatory framework for ETFs, which is called UCITS, Undertakings for Collective Investment in Transferable Securities. All right, step number four is choose between in distributing and accumulating ETFs. Some ETFs are ETFs made out of bonds, crypto or rare metals like gold, but most ETFs are equity ETFs, namely based on a collection of companies. These companies usually distribute dividends to their shareholders, and if you invest in an ETF, you are automatically a shareholder of all the companies inside the ETF. So, what happens to the dividend distributed by the companies when you own the ETF? There are basically two options. 
These dividends can be distributed to you as cash in your brokerage account, or they can be reinvested in the same ETF, increasing the value of it. If you look for the S&P 500 ETF in Trade Republic or in whatever app you use in Europe, you're gonna find that all ETFs have either the world ACC, as of accumulating, or DIST, as of distributing. An accumulating ETF reinvests the dividends and grows more in value, while the distributing gives you the dividends in the form of cash in your brokerage app. So, what is better for you? Well, that depends on your goals and on the tax laws in your country. Generally speaking, I always suggest to use accumulating ETFs if you're relatively young, because in this phase, your goal should be to accumulate wealth not spend a few dividends in Starbucks coffees. Step number four is choose between physical and synthetic ETFs. To explain this, I'm gonna use a website called justetf.com, which is probably the best database of ETFs for European investors. When you land on it, just click on ETF screener and you land on a page that lists all the European ETFs sorted by fund size. I want you to focus now on the ETFs number three and number four. They are two versions of the S&P 500 ETF, one from Vanguard and one from Invesco. What I want you to notice is that by the column replication, you have full replication by the Vanguard one and swap based on the Invesco one. So what is the difference? First of all, replication means the way that the ETF tracks the underlying index. For example, all S&P 500 ETFs, which are many, all track the same S&P 500 index. But how they do it, that's the difference. The Vanguard ETF here, for example, actually buys all the stocks that are included in the S&P 500 index. This is called full replication. The Invesco ETF instead is a synthetic ETF, which is a type of exchange traded fund that doesn't directly hold stocks or bonds. Instead, they use a so-called total return swap to get the same performance as an index, but without actually investing in any of the companies of the index. The interesting thing is that synthetic ETFs don't pay dividends or interest, so they're often more tax efficient because you don't pay any taxes. In my experience, I've always found synthetic ETFs to deliver a slightly better performance, but I like the idea of owning the actual company, so I tend to own both in my portfolio. Step number five is choose an ETF with a cheap trading expense ratio. Every ETF provider takes a part of your portfolio every year as fee. This fee is called trading expense ratio, or TER, and is expressed as a percentage. For example, let's say you buy 100 euros of the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, which as you can see here, has a TER of 0.07%. This means that in the first year, Vanguard is gonna take 0.07 euros, or seven cents, as a fee. In the following years, you keep paying 0.07% of your total value. So if the value of your 100 euros grew to 120 euros, you're gonna pay now 0.07% of 120 euros. What's important is avoid ETFs with a high expense ratio. High, I know, is a relative term, but in my case, I consider an ETF to be too expensive if the expense ratio is higher than 0.3%. Lucky for us, if you invest in common important ETFs instead of weird specific ETFs that some 15 years old finance guru suggests in you on Telegram, you're always gonna find cheap expense ratios. Step number six is don't gamble. You might believe that Slovakia is gonna become the new US or that fuel cells are gonna be the future of mobility, but when it comes to ETFs, your best choice is to go for big ETFs that are bought by many investors. And you're gonna notice that such ETFs are usually pretty diversified and embrace a huge sector or a whole economy. The reason why you need to go big are two. You might pay a bad price for it because of what's called a wide bid-ask spread. And also, small ETFs can be shut down by the fund provider. If that happens, you do get your money back, but it's a real pain in the butt. You may need one or two years to get the money back, and you may need to pay taxes. If you check the MSCI World ETF from Vanguard in Trade Republic, you see that this fund has over 70 billion euros in assets under management. Now, that's a good number, but not all ETFs are so big. In justetf.com, you can see the fund size in this column. And all these first ETFs are big and established, but you can also find really small ETFs, which 
I wouldn't suggest you to buy. When I personally pick ETFs for my portfolio, I stick to ETFs with a size of at least a few hundred million euros. All right, step number seven is find the best ETFs. Now you know what distributing and accumulating means, what physical and synthetic means, you know the expense ratio, and you know the ETFs must have a big fund size to be safe. But now how do you find the best and how do you compare them with each other? One of the best websites that I use for European ETFs is the one I showed you before, justetf.com. Here you can filter by asset class, region, country, sector, or you can also find bonds ETFs and commodity ETFs. But probably the most interesting is the comparison function. Let's say that you want to have the S&P 500 index as foundational ETF. And you look at a list of the biggest ETFs and select the iShares S&P 500 the Invesco S&P 500 and the Vanguard down here. After you select some ETFs, you see here Compare Selection. And by clicking on the arrow, you can click on Compare Selection in detail. This gives you a pretty good overview of the selected ETFs and you can compare performance over time, where you can choose the time frame down here, plus all the basic important information about them, like the things we discussed in this video. And going more down, you have every information about the holdings inside the fund, the countries and also the sectors. All right, step number eight, choose the right broker and start investing. There are many apps that you can use in Europe and you might have heard already of Trade Republic, Scalable Capital, the Giro, Trading 212, eToro and so on. Choosing the best broker, installing the app and starting investing is quite an important topic. That's why I can't just relegate it to the last two minutes of this video. That's why I made a whole video only to talk about brokers where not only I tell you the biggest advantages and disadvantages of all European brokers, but also step by step how you can open an account with them and start investing. So as next step, I suggest you take a look at this video. And by the way, there I also cover a lot of questions that new investors often ask me like, can I move my investments to a different brokerage account if I change my mind? And the answer depends on the broker, but for example, with Trade Republic, you can. And this is one of the many reasons why I use Trade Republic for my investments. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching until this point. If you have any question, you can always comment here and I'll be glad to answer any question from you. Remember that if you wanna start investing with Trade Republic and use the link in the description below or the QR code here, you're gonna receive a free stock with a value of at least 10 euros. And if you're interested in knowing more about all brokers in Europe and how they work, you can watch the video I mentioned before that you're also going to find here. I wish you a great day, everyone, or evening, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.